Hello everybody. Welcome to Andrew Broussard Watercolors. Today we're going to experiment with gum arabic, playing around wet and wet with it. Um, as we get started, we're going to wet the paper and let the paper stretch. And while I'm doing that, if you'd be so kind as to go down below and like and subscribe, I'd truly appreciate it. So, we have a quarter sheet of Stonehenge Aqua. It is 100% cotton and 140 pound cold press. Palette wise, we're going to play around with the basics. We're going to use, we have plenty of lit, let's run out. What else do we need? Burnt sienna is looking pretty good. Let's get a little bit more. I want some fresh from the tube raw sienna. That's been fun with the skies. We might kind of just glob it on there and see what happens. Let's see what else we got. We need some ultramarine. And then if we need anything else, we can add it as we put it out. All right, so with this, I want my paper to be super wet. And I haven't played with um, gum arabic in quite some time. The gum arabic, from what I remember, you can apply it wet and wet into an area, and it'll act as a resist um, for the spreading of that watercolor. I believe I've seen a demonstration where somebody had put it right below horizon line in the water. And then from there, um, they let the water spread naturally above and then resisted down below. So this is Windsor Newton brand. It also, um, just on the back, controls speed of wet color, reduces staining, slows drying, dilute with water as required. For some reason, the number, or one in 10, I one parts to 10 is popping to mind. I'm not quite sure what the ratio is. So we'll kind of just go with the flow. Let's grab some um, water. Got a pipette. So we're just kind of eyeballing it. That should be good. I believe some people mix it into their uh, brush cleaning water and that I think um, you know, it just affects every paint that they put down. Um, some people might also mix it into the paint itself on the palette. Um, there's different applications, I just i am not that versed in it. I did once put it in an eyedropper bottle so that I could have it separated out rather than pouring it, but over time it did uh, grow something on it. So. And that's the only time I ever had anything grow on watercolor paint, because gum arabic is the uh, binder or for watercolor. So my horizon line with the water horizon line around here somewhere. I can kind of see where I'm applying it. It does have a slight yellowish tint to it. So stretch out the paper while we go. I'm using a squirrel mop to apply it. No particular reason other than I can kind of dip it down into this inkwell. And it looks like I have a thorough coat, so we should be good. Kind of clean that off. We'll switch over to the medium hake. Oh, by the way, if you have a use for gum arabic, I would love to hear how you all utilize it. So straight from the tube, we're above where we applied the um, gum arabic, so not too much interaction with it just yet. I might do a second video where I sporadically apply it to the sky. And see how that affects it. 
All right, and then we'll do water reflection. Gum Arabic is in this area. You can see that it isn't spreading out as much as it went into the sky. Let's grab some alizarin. And I find myself wanting to paint straight from the tube with the um, initial application of paint. Not really cleaning the brush off. I'll just grab that, grab some water. All right. We have a little bit of ultramarine in this. Kind of a fiery sky. I'm not quite sure why or what I'm choosing color wise. I'm just kind of playing around. And this is the region from here to here, this is where we put the gum Arabic. So let's mix what we have with some uh, light red oxide. Try to get a distant purple going. And we'll play along that line. It acts as such as a resist, it doesn't even flow below that line. Let's apply some paint there, Let's see what we get happening. Okay, now we get some movement right there. That's one of the cats hissing at one of the other cats. It'll be nice. Guys, be nice. I mean, the cats have been hanging out today. Um, tomorrow we have a category three hurricane Delta making land fall. So I know we're going to lose power. I just, um, hope, um, if there's no like wind or rain, uh, wind or tree damage. And so I probably won't be putting up videos for a few days cause we'll probably have power out for a few days. Anywho, um, let's see. So I mixed some burnt sienna into this. Sorry for all the umming in this video. Kind of letting it do its part as the warmer color, let it sit forward. Applying it to that gum arabic area. A foreground land mass. Then from here. things darker. Let's get some burnt umber going. Let me get some fresher burnt umber out. Almost done with this tube. Guys, please play nice. I 
Okay, so this is burnt umber in the mix for darker values. You can see there's just that quite resistance to flowing with the wet and wet. So if you want to control areas, it seems like it's good for that. We have some really cool effects with the wet and wet taking place since we went so fast and loose with the sky. I have a whole bunch of burnt umber on my fingers. Now I'm filming directly onto my phone this time rather than filming live streaming with the phone and then uploading it onto YouTube. So if it comes to a point where we have to blow dry, I realize that I can pause the video and um, leave that out. So that'll be fun. Kind of putting some uh, tree clusters on the side to put stopping points for the eyes when viewing. We'll start a tree growth here. Here's the gum arabic spot. Let's see, everything's looking good so far. I'm gonna do a dry off, so I'm gonna pause the video and then start it right back up. Okay, so I did a dry off. Um, there's some areas that are still damp, but I am eager to paint. So now we're doing more of a dry brush on top of this. Here's a mixture of the ultramarine and the burnt umber. This is to put in the darker shadows and the closer trees in this grouping. So far all we've used is the hake. We're just using it for its textured purpose as well. Kind of Bob Rossian. It's fast and loose. I grab some sap green to freshen, liven some of this up. But right now we're just kind of putting out this dark, this mixture of colors that are on the brush. Let's grab some sap green. Also, we haven't cleaned this hake at all for this painting. some greens in there. We're just using that green as a convenience color. We should get a little um, burnt sienna in there.
comes from rain with the burnt umber. I think since I haven't really been using the Payne's Gray the past few days, um, I may start playing more with Thalo Blue for my dark mixtures. And we'll come back to that in another painting. Get that a little bit darker right in here. So just tonally, it just sits closer. Little scrapes for structure. Let's bring in a sloping area. Changing up the composition a little bit. It is a little sticky right in that area where that gum arabic is. Feeding in some texture for this closer grouping. Hey, it's please stop. All right, starting to swoop it around the front. Let's get some uh, raw sienna in there. Throw some light red oxide. Just got a fun variety of colors. Scrape some growth in. This is a very fall painting. This is fall. Yeah, so let's push this a little bit more in that fall direction. A little bit away from the green, a little bit more towards the raw and the uh, burnt umber. Uh, beets, sienna, sorry. I do want it dark. Let's grab some paints, Gray. I'm doing it. I'm biting. There we go. Help us get a little bit of dark in there. Just to darken up the corners. And right here. Okay, so now camera magic. I'm gonna pause it. Okay, and then we're back. I did another quick dry off. The pausing between is nice. It's probably easier for y'all viewer wise, so you don't have to deal with the blow dryer, and it shortens the video. It's just um, weird not live streaming. Okay, so I'm taking the hake. We're gonna put foreground tree. Different ways you could do the texture of the tree with the hake, you could come across, you can go up. You can grab the rigger for this, um, the squirrel mop. You can also use, um, they could play with the number four rigger. So there's a lot of different ways you can apply a tree. Let's uh, switch to the squirrel mop. Let's get a little bit more pointed end.
Okay, we're going to use the hake for a looser foliaged texture. some raw sienna. It's like little to no water in this mix. Payne's gray. Darker area around the base of this tree. Let's grab the number one rigger. You really don't need to use the three different brushes, just you could use the squirrel mop or the um, the rigger, you know, for this purpose. I just, um, I don't have light enough hands to use the mop, uh, squirrel mop to get the thin lines for this. Gonna be thinking a lot about trees tomorrow during that hurricane. We have three oak trees around the house. Um, well, we rent a house, and there's two live oaks in the backyard, and then on the neighbor's property, there's a taller oak. I'm not sure what type it is. It's directly to the south of us, so hopefully, I don't know. I don't want to dwell on stuff like that. Just, like I said, save it for tomorrow. Um, I'm gonna try to get a video in tomorrow, and you know, before, in, the, in the morning, or early afternoon. I may have framed a little too much on the top just right now. Let's grab some light red oxide. into this mix. Let me put a little sap green in, okay. Let me look at it through the camera. I wanna darken some up a little bit. Kind of a long grass overgrowth texture. Just grabbing some Payne's Gray. Oh, I can feel the gum arabic right there. Like it even changes the texture that you're going over with the brush. Some more gestural marks darkening up the trunk here. Also scrape into these if we so choose a little highlighting effect on them. Just grab a little bit of Payne's Gray. Here. A bit of growth. Use the Payne's Gray. Some of the birds. You could even put the silhouette of a bird. Should we put a bird down here? Yeah, let's try that. Okay, the head, and then the neck, then the thicker body. We're doing kind of a heron type 
Hätte ja. Dreieck. Speak. To a darker branch. I think uh, the herons, they have that little bit at the back of the head too, if you want to put that there. Okay. Let's camera magic to dry off. All right, the painting is dry. I'm gonna use a um, jelly roll to sign this. Let's throw a little mat over it. So now here's where I'm worried about filming directly onto the camera that I don't want it to flip the orientation on us. So I have it here and if I Turn it so if I apologize in advance if it flips, so I'm going to tilt the camera and we're good. Okay, so there you go. Um, fast and loose autumn sunset painting. Um, we experimented a little bit with the gum arabic in here. Uh, we'll experiment with it more. I feel like we didn't quite use it to the best of our ability. And when I say we and our, I'm just saying like the royal we, like there's nobody else here. Um, anywho, hope you enjoyed. I'll talk to you all soon. Check out all the links down below. Check out my other videos. Please like, subscribe, follow, and you'll be safe and have fun.